connected with consistently. You're going to call your name by a name. You're going to call yourself a name that the Lord said he's going to slay. And you're going to call yourself a Jehovah's Witness. Now, that's not all. Turn over to Isaiah 62 and verse number 4. Isaiah 62 and verse number 1. We're going to clear this name thing up. The Bible is accurate in all of its accounts and it echoes the same message of the new name earlier in the chapter. Isaiah 62 and verse number 1. Notice what the Bible says here. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as whiteness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will name. Now when did the Gentiles see the righteousness of God? Notice Acts chapter 10 and start in verse number 1. This is when the Gentiles saw the righteousness of God. Acts 10. And verse number 1, notice what the Bible says here. Acts chapter 10 and verse number 1. The Bible says there, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him Cornelius and when he observed him he was afraid and said what is it Lord so he said to him your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial to God now send men to Joppa and send for Simon whose surname is Peter he is lodging with Simon a tanner whose house is by the sea he will tell you what you must do. Drop down to verse number 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, in every nation, he says, whoever fears him and work righteousness is accepted by him. So the Israelites are not the people anymore. The Bible says, whatever nation, every nation that accepts the will of God is accepted by God. So that eliminates the whole name of the Jehovah Witnesses and their movement and the Israelites. Because the Israelites today are not God's chosen people because the Bible tells us that God is going to call them by a new name. Now what was that new name? What was the new name that God said he's going to call his chosen people? Turn your Bibles over to Acts chapter 11 and start at verse number 26. What was the new name that the Jews and the Gentiles were to be called today? Acts 11 and verse 26. Notice what the Bible says here. And when he had found some, he brought, them, brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were first called Jehovah's Witnesses in Antioch. Is that what the Bible says? The Bible said they were first called Christians in Antioch. But the Jehovah's Witnesses said they are Jehovah's Witnesses, and that's where they get their name from, the Old Testament. But think about this here. The Israelites were to keep the Sabbath. Why aren't the Jehovah's Witnesses keeping the Sabbath. That was a law that was required by the Israelites to keep because God said that you must keep that day and make it holy, keep it holy. But they're going to take the name Jehovah's Witness and they're going to use that as their doctrine and they're worshiping on another name. Their name, Jehovah's Witness, is not even authorized in God's word. You can't even find in the New Testament what God said to call yourself a Jehovah's Witness. No way. And if you look at Colossians 2.14, the Bible clearly tells us that the handwriting of the ordinance was blotted out. When Christ died on the cross, he nailed it to the cross. So the Old Testament is over. We learn from the Old Testament. We understand some of the errors that they did in the Old Testament, but the Bible never told us 
to call ourselves Jehovah Witnesses today. And they have this faulty doctrine. And they want people to call themselves Jehovah Witnesses. And the Bible says that we, they were first called Christians in any. The Lord only established one church. Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. He did not call it Jehovah's Witnesses either. He called it the Church of Christ. Romans 16, 16, the Bible of Christ. There's only one church whereby men can be saved today. And it's the only church that the Lord has established. There's not another name under him given among men whereby we must be saved, Acts 4, 20. Not another. So when these Jehovah's Witnesses come to you, and they tell you what they believe, and they try to give you one of those watchtower society tracks, we need to be able to contend for the faith. Like Jude chapter 1 and verse 3 tells us. You want to contend for the faith. In other words, stand up for the truth. Stand up to their face and tell them they're wrong. Ask them questions. Why do you call yourself Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, we go back to Isaiah 43 and 10. Well, where in the New Testament when God said call yourself a Jehovah's Witness? Ask them questions. And stand up for the truth and defend it. Because that's what we're supposed to do, church. These false doctrines that surround themselves around us, if we don't say nothing, they won't know. And then you have some innocent souls in these congregations that's desiring the truth. They won't get it unless we say something because we have it. We have it, church. And we must proclaim God's word to a sick and dying world. So when those Jehovah's Witnesses come to your door and they knock on your door, you invite them in. I invite them in and, and tell them let's have breakfast. They come early in the morning. I tell them, come on in. We're going to have breakfast. Man, my wife just cook. Sit down at the table. Let's talk. Because when you come to my house, it's a church of Christ's house. And I'm going to tell you the truth about what God said. You come to my house, you're going to tell me about some watchtower track. I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. And I don't want to hear that nonsense about a watchtower and Charles Taz Russell. There's no salvation in Charles Taz Russell. He has no salvation in it. And men are following that false doctrine. So you, you invite me and you contend for the faith that is in us. And you believe what God has told us through his word. If you're here this morning. I was sinking deep in sin, part of the peaceful shore.